Hello and welcome back to another trades training video. I'm Joe Carswell and this lesson is another one in our wall framing course. We're going to cover a really important concept here we call layout. So let's get right into it. Framing is all about consistency and one of the biggest rules about consistency is layout. That means regular patterns or placing of our studs in a wall so that we get the strength that we need and so that our trades that come after we frame can work in this space successfully. There's three main layout patterns that we work with. That would be 24 on center, 16 on center, and 12 on center. Each one of those patterns expects a stud that would center on those different measurements every space in that wall. Of the three layouts, 24 on center uses the least amount of materials. We're working towards this when we're talking about uh, energy conservation and using the least amount of materials, energy efficient building. When you get to 16 on center, this is one of the most common layouts to be used. Uh, I've used it a lot in my lifetime. When you get to 12 on center, you're using the most amount of materials, but with that material, there's some added strength and stiffness of your framing. This illustration compares the three main layouts, 24, 16, and 12 on center. All of the studs are in regular patterns. What you should notice here is that there is a stud shared of all of these layouts every four feet, and this pattern repeats all the way down the wall. That repeating four foot pattern is really important when we're adding materials to this framing later. Whether we're using OSB as sheathing on the outside of this building or drywall on the inside of this building, those sheets are available in standard dimensions of four feet by eight feet. So you can see if we want to fasten all of the edges properly, we need this spacing for all of those materials to fit on this wall. When we're talking about these materials fitting on a wall, they literally need to have their edges break on the center of those studs. Let's take a close look at that. I've got a mini uh, example of a wall here. It's scaled down and I have a, a piece of cardboard here that I've made that will kind of illustrate how a panel should break on a regular pattern or lay or a layout on studs. So this say would be my drywall or my OSB sheathing. And if it was to be fastened to this wall, it should, if the layout is correct, break on the center of this stud. That gives me half of this stud, which is three quarters of an inch on that side to fasten my next panel here. Without that three quarters of an inch, we cannot fasten these, uh, these materials successfully to this framing. A lot of code spells this out very specifically. So here's the cool part. If we have regular studs in here and we put them on one of those layouts, 24, 16, or 12 inches, we can shift these panels anywhere we need them and we still have that break, panel break in the center of our studs and we can still fasten other panels to either side. So that is the beauty and the importance of this uh, specific accurate pattern or layout. Any of them work as long as that module of four feet is always kept. Hi, sorry for the interruption. I had a quick message for you. We offer a lot of other lessons at our learning portal, which is tradeskillsu.com. If you're a teacher and you found us here, we have a ton of other resources to help you with your students teach them construction in a digital environment. You can find those at teachconstruction.org. Once again, thanks for watching. Let's get back to the video. So picture this, a drywall crew shows up to a framed house with a load of drywall to install. Maybe they've got a day, two days to do the job. They come in, they throw a board up on the wall and their layout is not right. They've got the end of this drywall and they're looking for a stud on layout, they don't have it. They have to modify what they're doing. They might have to trim this drywall. They're spending more time doing this work. One stud out could throw out the whole entire wall. So you might have just one stud out, you might have several. The bottom line is, the trades that follow up on the framers expect this regular pattern. They need it to be accurate. And if it's not, that one mistake by the framer is going to carry through 
several other trades. They might not be able to put a stud in here. There might be plumbing in the way. There might be wiring in the way. So it's really important in that first framing step that the framers pull their tape, get this done accurately, and end up with a layout that all of the trades that follow can expect. This same layout concept works when we're talking about vertical joints. And this is a horizontal uh, situation here. If we turn this panel vertically, we still expect those same panel breaks. And it's even more important now that we get these exactly on center and that they're plumb in the wall. Because now, if we're adding several panels, they're sharing very long joints. And you only have three quarters of an inch uh, on either side of this stud to fasten our materials to. So if you're off by a quarter of an inch, you have really cut down your surface to nail to. So up till now, we've been looking at a wall with no rough openings in it. That's not very realistic. Most walls will have doors and windows in them. Our layout does not go away just because we've cut openings into our framed walls. We have to consider that layout in any of the partial or cripple studs in that wall that are above a doorway or above or below a window. All of those should follow that same pattern, whether it's 24 on center, 16 on center, or 12 on center. I can't stress enough the importance of layout and framing. It not only happens with walls, it will also be part of our floor framing, of our roof framing, of our ceiling framing, everything. It needs to be constantly in our mind as a framer, that regular pattern, where it's falling, and keeping that accurate so that all the trades that come after us can do their job properly. So I hope that makes sense. Nail down this concept, understand it, and carry it through to some of the lessons and some of the skills exercises that we'll have specifically about plate layout. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next lesson.